This tutorial explains how to create a grid of plots using the layout function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and the first example is based on the matrix object that we can create with line one of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new matrix object is appearing, which is called layout matrix one. And if you click on this matrix object, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our matrix. And as you can see, our matrix contains two rows and three columns. And the values in this matrix correspond to the positions of the plots in our grid layout. I'm going to illustrate that based on actual plots that we will draw to this grid layout. But first we have to apply the layout function and within the layout function we simply need to specify the name of the matrix object that we have just created. So if you run line three of the code our grid layout is set up and then in the next steps we can draw the plots to our grid layout. So if you run line five of the code, the first plot is shown at the bottom right in our grid layout. And as you can see, this plot is shown at the upper left part of the grid. If you run line six of the code, another plot is shown at the bottom. If you run line seven of the code, the next plot is drawn and so on. And you can also see that the ordering of these plots corresponds to the matrix values. So the first plot is shown at the upper left part the second plot is shown at the lower left part. The third plot is shown in the middle, in the upper line of the plot layout and so on. So if you draw the other three plots, you will see that these plots will follow the same logic, which is based on our matrix. So in this first example, I have shown you how to apply the layout function to a standard matrix, which simply contains a sequence of values. However, it's also possible to perform other applications of the layout function. And another example is shown in lines 12 to 20 of the code. So in lines 12 and 13, I'm first specifying another matrix object. So after running these lines of code, you can see another matrix appearing at the top right. And if you click on this matrix object, you can see that we have created another matrix containing six data cells. However, you can also see that two of the data cells are equal to zero. So let's apply the layout function to this matrix and then I will show you what this causes in our plot layout. So after running line 15 of the code, our grid layout is specified based on our second matrix. And then in lines 17 to 20 of the code, I'm creating four different plots. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that another grid of plots has been created. And you can also see that the two positions where our matrix was equal to zero are empty. So you can see by opening the matrix once again, that the position at the second row in the middle is zero. And at this position, you don't see a plot. And the same is true for the last column in the first row this position in our grid layout is also empty. So in the first two examples, I have explained how to apply the layout function without any further specifications of the design of the plots. However, in the last example of this tutorial, I want to show you how to change the width and the heights of each plot in our plot layout. So in this case, I'm specifying the width argument to be equal to a sequence from one to three and the heights argument to be equal to a sequence from two to one. So if you run these lines of code, our grid layout is updated once again. And if we draw these plots to our layout, you can see that the width and the heights of our plots are now also corresponding to our specifications in the layout function. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. 
I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.